Hey there, Dean Mannix here, and we're over halfway on the eight must-have conversations for your sales kickoff. So conversation five is all about improving your first meeting and proposal process. Now, a message I constantly repeat is a reminder that in most businesses that have margins of around 20% or more, a 10% improvement in conversion generally increases profit by 40%. And the thing is that a 10% improvement in conversion is very achievable if you commit to driving more efficiency into your first meeting and proposal process. Now notice I didn't say getting better at closing and objection handling. These are important skills, but this is generally not the real problem here. So let me take you through a few considerations for improving efficiency in this era. Now the first thing to consider is how effective you are at creating or confirming an emotional need before you agree to provide detailed proposals and pricing. You see, until there's a problem to solve, what you're selling is not a solution. So ask yourself, how could I consistently share and create discussion around the problems that I or we are most effective at solving for our ideal target customer? So as an example, could you visualize those problems to make them easier to discuss and understand? Is there a diagnostic you could have prospective customers do prior to or during early meetings? Is there a third party report you could send prospective customers that highlights all the problems that you solve with your services or your products. You see, the better you get at highlighting and educating your ideal target customers on the problems you solve, the better your conversion rates are going to be. So next, consider whether you need to introduce a customer commitment level that's required before you spend more than say 30 minutes on a written proposal or pricing. So what would you want the prospective customer to do, to say or to share before you agree to commit time and effort to writing proposals and providing detailed pricing. The big point I'm making here is that for most salespeople, too much time and energy is wasted writing proposals and providing detailed pricing for people that are either not ready to buy or not ready to buy from you. And writing proposals makes us feel like we're making progress and a fat pipeline makes us feel safe as salespeople, but none of us get paid to write proposals and provide pricing. So, we need to make sure that the time and the effort we put into this is correlated to the amount of genuine commitment the prospective customer has given us. Now, if you're not sure how to quantify whether a prospective customer is actually ready to buy, then search my other posts on the idea model and other strategies for quantifying prospect commitment. Next, consider whether you can simplify the process of creating proposals and pricing that you have to write. So consider which part of the proposal writing is taking the most time and effort and just find three ideas for reducing the time or the effort on that area. Once again, too much time is wasted doing up detailed solutions when an email confirming high level discussions and offering more detail if they'd like to proceed is often much more effective. Uh, often creating a generic capabilities or solutions document with case studies, testimonials and other supporting information actually enables salespeople to deliver lots of content in proposals without reinventing the wheel every time they have to write one. You see, these don't even need to go into a document as a lot of this information can actually be you know, put into or exist in a capability document that you just attach to proposals or even web pages that you provide links to. So I'm not saying you can't do major tailoring for important proposals, but only spend time doing this for prospective customers that have absolutely committed to doing business with you, your way, and at your pricing. Now one last thing that you should consider in this area is whether you've got highly developed closing and objection handling skills and process. You know, the goal must always be to help prospective customers buy your solution. But that doesn't mean that people won't need your help, guidance and enthusiasm to make decisions and take actions. So some questions to consider here are, have we written down all of the common objections that we face in both engaging prospects and selling our solution? You see, remember, a problem identified is a problem that can be solved. So once you know what the objections are and you've written them down, the next question is, have we developed strategies that we can deploy throughout the sales process to educate the customer on why the common objections should not be a concern or reason to not proceed? You see, avoiding objections is significantly more powerful than handling objections and a much more pleasant experience for the prospective customers that you're selling to. And finally, are we practicing our solution presentations, closing and objection handling skills 
in a manner that genuinely improves our skills and conversion rates. Now, one of the most powerful strategies in this area is to role play live and real opportunities the day before a proposed solution is presented to the prospective customer. Now this is also a great place to role play pricing objections and responding to customer negotiation strategies. If you do this as a team, in a, in a team setting, and get other salespeople to role play the customer, then everybody learns and everybody improves in this area. And even better, you don't need to pay an expensive consultant like me because this is all done in-house. Now let's wrap this up by reminding you that the goal is not to provide lots of people with pricing and written solution plans. The goal is to win business and do it with the least amount of time, effort and energy. The question to consider at your kickoff and actually throughout the year is what are the most efficient and effective ways to convert interest into confirmed need and genuine opportunity into new customers. Now in the next session, I want to remind you that you're not alone and that leveraging the talents, the energy and the networks of other people is a great way to grow sales and should be part of your plan. Remember, if you're doing a major kickoff, please speak to my team about having me along as a conference presenter. I'd love to work with you. And if you're an individual salesperson or you've got a small business that can't afford their own kickoff, please come to our sales kickoff event on February the 12th. All the details are on deanmannix.com and there's even a competition to win over $12,000 worth of sales training next year. So here's to a better sales life and a better kickoff for you and your people. Thanks so much for watching that video and I hope you found it valuable and educational and useful for your role in sales. So if you did, please share it. Remember, sharing's free and every other salesperson out there needs all the help they can get. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I've got lots and lots of content coming out and plenty of content inside the channel right now ready for you to digest. Enjoy and remember, sales is meant to be fun. If it's not, you need to change the way that you're doing it.